I'm gonna try to put him in the corner so we get the widest, widest angle possible. All right, so we're doing a chiropractic evaluation and adjustment on Corby. He's a 24 year old dressage horse, semi-retired dressage horse. Um, the owner at this facility here, we're at um, Arizona Riding Academy. She does, she gives lessons on him and still does some dressage on him. But he gets adjusted about every eight weeks on a maintenance schedule just to keep him feeling good. And he usually really enjoys his adjustments. So for these, you wanna kinda of get a wider angle so you keep most of him in the picture because they won't know what they're looking at if we don't keep it back. There we go, good boy. So I like to start from the back end and move my way forward. So I will typically check some reflexes back here, make sure he can bring his back up. And you can kind of see his head bobbing when I do this. And that's really what I want to see is that the movement that I'm starting back here is making its way all the way forward. And that's especially important when I'm doing lateral flexion of the pelvis like this. So you can kind of see his head bouncing around back and forth. So I'm trying to initiate a little wave-like movement back here. And you can see I'm only doing a little bit of motion, but you can see kind of his head wiggling back and forth up there with that. <laughs> Obviously he's super friendly and in Ellis pocket. Let's see. So I'm gonna check him in extension, see if he can drop his pelvis down and forward for me. And that's really good. And this is typically how he is. He's just usually really comfortable, really easy to move around. And it's surprising given that he's 24 years old that he moves like this, but he's been taken care of really, really well. You can just tell through how his body moves. He's a little bit rocked back on this left side. So his left side of his pelvis is a little bit stuck into flexion. So I'm going to adjust it into extension, try to loosen that up a little bit. So one of the things that I look for when I'm putting pressure on the pelvis like this is keep an eye on these low back muscles. Because if I push the pelvis into extension like I am, these low back muscles shouldn't be firing. They should be soft, which they are, but he's got a little spasm happening right there. Sandy asks, how do you know that they need adjustment? So uh, the only way that I know that an adjustment is likely needed is when the rider or the owner tells me or contacts me and says that something is off, like the horse doesn't want to take a lead change or the horse doesn't want to go a certain direction or, um, you know, they're fighting taking the bid or it's really hard to get them to go forward. There's a whole bunch of different movement issues that riders will experience, uh, experience, excuse me, and then they'll call me to have them come check the horse. And then I do these motion palpation exercises and just try to see if something's moving or not moving properly. And then I do the adjustments then. It's, it's, really, it's really difficult to look at a horse and see, you know, and tell whether or not it needs to be adjusted because they might be moving a certain way because they're in pain, they might be sore. Um, there's a whole bunch of different reasons and it's not just because they need to be adjusted. All we know is that there's something not moving right and then you have to get your hands on them and evaluate them to determine if what you're experiencing is um, able to be corrected by an adjustment. So all you can really do is, is look at the horse move and take what the client gives you and, you know, go and do your evaluation hands-on to see if what you find matches what they're experiencing and then you can easily correct the problem if that makes sense and that's really the reason why most of my clients are on a schedule like we don't wait until a problem pops up because if you're waiting for a problem to pop up because horses are prey animals there's likely been an underlying problem for a while and now all of a sudden they're not able to compensate anymore because the compensating area is getting sore. 
So now you have to spend time correcting these issues and trying to get them to have proper structure rather than maintaining proper structure all along. So I would highly recommend getting your horses checked whether or not they're experiencing any issues or not. All right, so I'm gonna flex him around his shoulder. See if he can come and touch my hand. Dang. Uh, Judy asks, asks anyone better. you know that does this in North Georgia area? North Georgia, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I know there's a lady out there who teaches at the school that I went to. Um, her name is Heidi. I don't know her last name. Um, and I don't know if where at in Georgia she is. Um, but if you go to animalchiropractic.org or ivca.de, those are two websites that have a directory of certified animal chiropractors and you can find somebody that's in your area. Oh, there we go. Um, who's on those websites. I'm gonna be starting to come out to Georgia and Florida um, next month. So if you're willing to trailer down towards the Atlanta area or uh, I think one of my clients is about an hour north of Atlanta I'd be happy to work on your horses as well. Good boy. Awesome. So he had really nice releases in both sides of his neck. So I'm just giving him a second to integrate that. And then I'll go on to his pole. <laughs> That's where I am. How do I make appointment? Perfect. Um, so if you will go, you can either go to my website and send us a message on my contact form. The link's at the top of the page. Or if you want to send me an instant message on my Facebook page, which is at Sport Horse Chiropractic, you can do that as well. And then uh, one of us will get back to you to set that up with you. Got the lip hanging low here. Boy. There we go. For a 24 year old, he moves incredibly well and is super easy to just, doesn't really fight anything. There's a little pop in the base of his skull on the right side. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Is that offensive? Boy, give him that for a second. Hey, buddy. <clears throat> Boy, oh. So we have about nine, I think we have nine horses on the schedule today, so. If you want to watch a couple of these, we'll be probably going live a couple of times. All right, so I'm going to stretch his legs out here, check his shoulders. What'd you say? Is it buying him or something? Nope, I'm just a chiropractor, just oh, helping him. We have, we have someone from your, your place come over here. Hey, buddy. Oh, there we go. Boy. Oh, there goes a big pop in the shoulder. I also have a stretching course on my website. The link's at the top of my page at sporthorsechiropractic.com. And I have about 26, I think it's 26 stretches on there that you can do just to help keep your horses nice and flexible and moving well. And just with doing those stretches, like we just got with him in the shoulder, you can get some pretty significant releases in the joints just by stretching them out. Good boy. Good 
boy. And you can either subscribe to that on a monthly basis and cancel whenever your heart desires, or you can purchase the course outright and then you have unlimited access to all the videos and any, any new ones that I post there as well. And I'm gonna be doing another video series for dogs here pretty soon. So keep an eye out for that. Oh, there goes another release in this shoulder. And if you guys don't mind clicking that like button for me, that would be awesome. And if you subscribe, I also have a longer form content on my actual YouTube channel. So it's more, it's more like the duration of these lives. I have videos on there. They're 20, 30 minutes long. If you're interested in watching other full adjustments like this. Get his back legs. Boy. You can see he's got some arthritis in his fetlocks. Those are pretty big, but still got really good movement back here. I mean, that's really phenomenal for such an old horse. So I like to just flex this leg forward and up. See if I can get the that lock above the hawk pretty easily, and he can do that really easily. And I just put a little bit of flexion up through the stifle and SI joint. Just make sure that those are nice and springy and comfortable. There we go, a little stifle release there. There's nothing in there, buddy. Looking for his grain. And then at the end of all these, I like to do a TMJ stretch. Just get them to really stretch the jaw, move that tongue around. Let's we'll see if they can extend at the pole. So he's going into full extension already. And then I just wait for them to hold their mouth open for a second and give me a really good stretch. And then I'll let it go. There we go. And then I always do both sides since they have two temporal mandibular joints. I want to make sure I get both sides stretched equally. Make sure that jaw is moving equidistant to both sides. And that there's no head tossing or signs of discomfort on either side. And he's real easy with that. So that's perfect. And this is a pressure point stretch that I also have in my stretching course. Teach you how to do that. Teach you how to rotate their head around to the shoulder flex and extend the pelvis and their back. A whole bunch of things that you'll find useful on there. All right, and he's all set. Thank you guys very much for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next live.